Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. This video is basically introductory on atomic variables in Java. A shared state very easily leads to problem when concurrency is involved. If access to the shared mutable object is not managed properly, application can quickly become prone to some hard to detect concurrency errors. In this tutorial, we will revisit the use of locks to handle concurrent access, explore some of the disadvantages associated with locks and finally uh, introduce atomic variables as an alternative. So let's have a look at this class, right? Here this class is called counter which is having a one instance variable counter and we have a one instance method is called increment and this is increment in this counter variable and uh, this is a public getter method which returns the final value of this counter right uh, <coughs> in the case of single threaded environment this works perfectly fine however as soon as we allow more than one thread to write we start getting inconsistent results this is because of the simple increment operation count plus plus which may look like an atomic operation but in fact is a combination of three operations first reading the value then incrementing by one and finally writing the updated value back right if two threads try to get and update the value at the same time it may result in lost update right one of the ways to manage access to an object is to use locks this can be achieved by using uh, the synchronized keyword uh, in the increment method right signature the synchronized keyword ensures that only one thread can enter the method at one time right so first of all let me run this let me make use of this class so here i have another client program and in this client program you can see uh, i have declared a uh, executor service outside of the try block and here inside the try block I have instantiated I got the reference of executor service and here uh, we have a utility class is called new fixed thread pool in executors class right so that's it returns us the executor service basically and this will create a thread pool with two worker thread right so basically we are using, using executor service to create a thread. Now I have created two tasks using runnable and here I made use of lambda expression. If you don't know how to write lambda then you can refer my Java 8 posted videos. So here uh, I have two tasks. First task I am iterating uh, I mean for loop 2000 times and I am calling increment method of this counter class. Again, I have a second task here. I am also calling increment method 80,000 times, right? Now, these two tasks, task 1 and task 2, I have submitted to the executor service by calling submit method. And here, I am making pause of one second, right? I have called await termination method. And finally, I am trying to print the final value of counter. Let's see what value we are getting. And this class is not thread safe as of now, right? So let's see if I run this application then what final counter value is getting returned. Now here you can see this is not our expected value. In for first loop to 20,000 times and second loop 80,000 times we are calling the increment method. Say, so expected value of final counter value would be uh, 100,000 right 1 lakh but that value we are not getting. If you run many times then we are not getting the expected value then as we discuss we should increment this uh, this uh, in, uh, this we should synchronize this uh, increment increment method so let's sorry guys so now i have made this method synchronized and one more modification i am going to do I am going to declare this value variable as volatile right and that's it you don't need to make this class synchronize uh, this method as synchronized as well and after doing this modification if I run this application 
that let's see we are getting the 1000 sorry 100,000 and that's the our expected value let's run this program many times make sure that every time we are getting the expected value right now uh, so here you have seen one of the ways to manage access to an object uh, to use locks right this can be achieved by using synchronized keyword in increment method signation the synchronized keyword basically ensures that only one thread can enter uh, method at a one time right so here additionally what we have done we uh, need to add volatile keyword to ensure proper reference visibility among threads in previous video tutorial we had talked about the volatile keyword if you did not watch that one then i request you to go and watch now uh, using locks solves the problem however performance takes a hit when multiple threads attempts to acquire the lock one of them wins right while the rest of the threads uh, are either blocked or suspended the process of suspending and then resuming a thread is very expensive and affects the overall efficiency of the system uh, in a small program such as uh, a counter right what we are using over here the time spent in context switching may be become very more than actual code execution thus thus greatly reducing the overall efficiency right so this way we can solve our problems but still uh, if you look into the performance wise then performance will be very slow because our application is very simple this that's the, the many threads try to acquire the lock on this i mean object uh, counter object and that will enter into this method and try to increment a simple uh, counter variable right so context switching between thread uh, uh, will be very frequently right so and that's the reason uh, performance of application will be very slow so we have a, another alternative if you have a, this kind of uh, functionality on place there you want to maintain some kind of counter stuff then java provides uh, uh, atomic classes which uh, belongs to uh, in java.etool.atomic package if you, i explore this package then you can go to this package java.etool.concurrent.atomic and here you can see you have a atomic boolean atomic integer atomic long right uh, there are many more method atomic reference etc so basically this these classes basically do not use synchronized keyword right uh, still these classes are thread safe because uh, these classes have been created on the base on the something is called compare and swap that's that is kind of kind of uh, algorithm algorithm which basically do not apply any kind of synchronization mechanism uh, th this these classes have been designed uh, by using a variable as volatile so if you go to here then you, here you can see that is uh, applied a volatile variable and that is uh, using kind of uh, optimistic locking instead of pessimistic locking so in next video tutorial we'll explore uh, detail about these classes provided classes and we'll take uh, one of the huge cases and we'll implement and we'll see how uh, same uh, same example we can uh, how we can convert into the uh, using some kind of atomic long or atomic integer right so that's all i have in this video tutorial guys this code I am going to check in on the GitHub and GitHub location. I will specify in the video description. If you really like this video, then please hit on the like button. Please share and subscribe my YouTube channel as well.